Hi everybody, welcome to San Francisco Ballet's Meet the Artist Conversation. I'm Jenny Scholick and I am your host for today's Meet the Artist Talk. For those of you here in San Francisco, you know that these conversations normally happen immediately before a performance in the War Memorial Opera House, but this year we've had to move so many things online, including these conversations. The conversation you're about to see was recorded in late April or early May when we conducted in-depth interviews with each of our newly promoted soloist and principal dancers. We hope that these conversations will give you some insight into their journey, their training, and how they've gotten to where they are. I hope you enjoy this conversation and thank you so much for your support of San Francisco Ballet. I said it off the record, but I'll say it again. So many congratulations on uh, your promotion to soloist last week. So we're going to take some time and kind of dive into what got you here and your last 10, 11 years 11, in the company. 11. Yeah. 11 years. Oh my God. That flew by. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> before we do that, um, where are you? How are you? Are you holding up? What has yeah. shelter in place looked like for you? Oh, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm in my apartment in San Francisco, which is my, all my family's on the East Coast. And like, I just figured it would be better if I stayed. Um, but yeah, I can't complain. I'm like staying in, trying to stay like creative and active and trying to like you know, get some space from things and no, it's been fine. I like definitely this pandemic has reminded me of my privilege and um, kind of how lucky I am. And even just like the people in my life, how, how lucky I am to have them because I miss them and, and all that. But, but honestly, I'm good. Um, been taking some ballet class at home. Yeah, and have you been dancing? Have you been letting yeah. your body recover? What's that been like? Yeah, well, a little bit of both. At like, right when we started, I was definitely taking class every day um, in my apartment on like our hardwood floors <laughs> in socks. Uh -huh. but, and then, at, but I think feel like after that three week mark, you just see yourself like kind of getting worse and like getting a little bit more turned in. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more space from this because I can, and that's like a really rare opportunity for us. Um, and so I've been trying to like stay active in other ways and like have, still have an active relationship with my body, but maybe outside of the context of ballet, even though I'm still taking some classes just to like, cause it actually feels good and like to stay mobile and stretched. That's something that I miss just doing other conditioning stuff. But um, yeah, so that's been good. That's all been good. Yeah, I mean, you have the time, let your body recover. You don't need to like, the worst thing right would be to like push too hard and get injured right. while you're like <laughs> sheltering, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like watch some of these, I mean, it's amazing what people are doing at home, but sometimes I look at some of it and I'm like, I don't think that's smart. <laughs> God, I could imagine. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Like, like when I do a little bit of center and I'm trying to do pirouettes like between my couch and my coffee table. And, yeah. and like, it's, I have like a good, like two inch clearance of my knee and passe on each side. So like really you, you I, can't be swiveling yeah. around. <laughs> and That'd be really upright. Yeah. We think about it. Cause I've been helping out um, with getting the school classes on to okay. Zoom. Yeah. But I think about these, you know, we're all, all the faculty are just like yeah. these kids, like they're not, you know, like be careful, just be right. careful. If be okay we're all in the same boat we'll get back into a studio soon right. well not soon it's okay. I feel like we've we as a art form have have never have always really kept our information like in studios in face mm -hmm. to -face people yeah it's really interesting to see everyone be so generous with their knowledge and their experience and because now you can log on for free to be taught like be taught by artistic directors across the country yeah. like it's insane and and I think like I mean even as a professional I'm still trying to take advantage of that and I can't imagine if I was a kid I would be like just eyes wide open and trying to soak up everything so I think that I think that kind of that breaking 
breaking down of what we think we know about this art form and how we share information um, is going to be really important once we kind of get back in a, a more normal setting. I, I, I think that's really a special silver lining about this experience. Yeah, it is. The world has changed and it's not going to go back totally. exactly the way it was. Yeah. There's going to be ramifications yeah. for a long time, good and bad, I think. Yeah. Well, you mentioned being a young ballet student, so I'm going to take that as my opportunity to segue into talking about your life as a young ballet student. Um, <laughs> how did you get started in dance? Where were you? What was that like? Um, okay, I, I feel like I've told this story a few times and every time I shape it a little bit more, so forgive me. <laughs> but it started, I was, I was in a musical theater program in Pennsylvania, which is where I grew up, and I was auditioning for a production of Babes in Toyland just as like a theater performance, and we had a dance portion of the audition, and we had to go in there and like improvise being spiders or something like that, I don't really remember. Um, but the dance teacher, saw me in that audition and after it was over came out to kind of like came out to the sea of moms and kind of just asked she like had her hand on my head and she was like okay who belongs to this kid and my mom kind of like shuffles up there and was like oh um <laughs> and so this teacher kind of like she checks my facility checks my feet um and basically tells my mom that she should put me in ballet and then kind of leaves <laughs> and my mom's like okay uh sure uh and so my mother, I really didn't want to because where I lived, like boys didn't do that. There were no boys in any of those classes. Where in Pennsylvania sure. work? I was in Pennsylvania? Eastern Pennsylvania in the right. Lehigh Valley. Um, mm -hmm. And I think my mom like lied to me and told me that like <laughs> there were, and then I remember like showing up and I was the only one. But she was, basically she said, Miles, if you don't like it after three classes, you don't have to do any anymore, but you have to give it a shot. Um, and I ended up kind of just like falling in love with it. And that that teacher became my first ballet teacher that I still see often. She's still in Pennsylvania and we, like we'll still do coaching sessions or just get lunch. And she's kind of like my ballet mom. So I feel really grateful to have had her support as well as my own family support through my whole life because, you know, it's a, it's a, definitely a, a lot of big decisions you have to make when you're young or I had to in order to kind of get the right training and right experience in order to make my way into a professional company um, you know and a lot of sacrifice and dedication and all of that fun stuff but that was all kind of that those decisions were less effort for me I was just like naturally kind of like oh yeah I need to go to boarding school because I can be a better dancer there um, yeah so, so kind of put in the door. Okay. Two questions. Um, yeah. what kind of like sort of what style was that early training in? Was she like a really sort of Russian influenced oh, American, the yeah. sort of hodgepodge American thing? What what did that look like for you? I think she was. I think she was truly like an American teacher, not in a Balanchine aesthetic, but uh, in a in a technical yeah. like sensation based technique. Yeah which I think was yeah. really good for me to start out. Um, after, after that, I ended up going to a few Vaganova trained schools, which, which was really great for the, just to have like this um, kind of like rubric of the art form. Like I think, I think it really breaks down like where you should be, what coordination is, what the positions are in a way that made me feel more secure in just my knowledge for like knowledge and I guess organization of what my body was doing. Um, it, I also felt like that gets out of like sensation based moving and kind of focuses more on place. Pl right. It's really about so, you know, I think I, I, I was happy. I was felt lucky to get a little bit of both because I could, I could kind of like steal from here and then, steal from over there and you know which is nice which is sort of one of the nice things often about mm -hmm. i think dancing in the united states totally. right like in certain cultures it's like there's the one way that you're going to train and to get different kinds of training you're going to have to like 
leave the country. And right. here people do. It's like you'll do yeah. a Vagana, you know, Vaganda school for a few years yeah. and then maybe you'll be yeah. balancing, you know, you can sort of make that transition right. Right. All from things. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Vaganova training, you made your way to Herod. Yes. How old were you? What was that decision like to go off to boarding school in a very kind of intense? Yeah. Well, I, so be, right before we made that decision, because that was, you know, I wouldn't have been able to go if my parents weren't supportive. supportive. So I have to say that that was really a family decision too. Um, I was, I remember just my mom was driving me to like four different ballet schools in order to get enough classes in a day. I was going to performing arts high school. So I was dancing my first half of the day, then I would do the second half of the school day, I would do, um, you know, academics, and then I would go dance until like 9pm. But so much of that time was spent in a car. There were only like a few really serious kids in all of those schools, um, serious about ballet, specifically. Right. And I went to the summer program at Herod and they invited me to stay and I and I, I think it, it it was just kind of a natural decision for me. I was I, I had decided that's what I wanted to do for a, a career and I knew mm -hmm. that I needed to go kind of get better training in order to finish. Not that, you know, not that my 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 ballet mom teacher wasn't good enough, but it's also, you know, you have to find the right men's training, which I really didn't have in Pennsylvania, like all of these specific things. I think the biggest help for me was to finally be surrounded by other kids who took the art form as seriously as I did, or probably more seriously, honestly. And like, which allowed me to realize kind of what, what I, how I had to focus um, right. and discipline myself. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but the thing is, I remember I went to boarding school and I had a blast, even though yep. it was. What was it really like? <laughs> in your day? Was it, I mean, was it, because I always heard it's really strict and they're like locking you in your bedroom. Like, what was it? Locking us in our bedrooms. Not a locking us, alarming us in our bedrooms. No, uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> thing, uh, you know, you have to make your bed every morning. It was a little bit like military in that way. But at the same time, you know, I didn't really care. I don't know. That wasn't, mm -hmm. I just remember my, because my sister left for college the same year that I left for boarding school, which my family wasn't really expecting to have like an empty nest. And I remember my mom calling me and she was like, Miles, you need to make sure to check up, up, like call us because we don't know what's happening. Like, are you alive? What's, because I was just having like fun and we were working really hard and all kind of, I was finally in kind of my tribe. And I thought that was, that was really special. Um, and so then from, from Herod, then I went to study with Edward Allison in his professional division in New York City. Rapidly from Herod and then moved to New York or did you leave I, early? I just did one year. So I did my junior year, right, at Herod. And then I kind of did my soft, sophomore year online on like a bus to New York City because um, I would commute from Pennsylvania for my first year. And then my second year at Allison, I got an apartment with three ballerinas. We got like a one bedroom convertible and like, <laughs> you know, did that whole thing, which was so fun. Too. Um, and he was also, that was, that was a really intense and strict program. And I was his first male student because he had just opened the school. Um, and only one. I remember when, what, like 2006 seven. Yeah. seven? Cause I was 16, yeah. 16 and 17. Yeah, so yeah. that was, I mean, that was great uh, to have that kind of attention. And mm -hmm. also we did YAGP, which I really, you know, I know there's there are mixed feelings about putting ballet in a competitive sense, but that's really how I learned how to partner. I did, we did mm -hmm. Giselle Pata de, um, and even just, just to start transitioning from solely class and technique and moving it to apply to a stage performance was really that was a defining moment for me so um and i love performing so it, you know that that was really it was great to just like focus on one thing and and be thoroughly coached and and really again see what how detail oriented the art form is and how you know i would have to take that for myself once i got into a company uh, moving forward yeah 
So from Allison, you come to San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Um, Edward Allison, of course, danced here yeah. in San Francisco Valley. So did he encourage that? Where where did sort of the desire to come to San Francisco yeah. come from? Well, I, I had a DVD. I don't remember what was on this DVD. I want to say it was like a mixed rep, but I don't, I don't even know if that exists. I don't, I don't know. But I remember having a DVD of San Francisco ballet because I, one year for Christmas, I just wanted ballet DVDs. And I was so just taken by the versatility of the company and kind of like the freshness of the company. Uh, and I loved how it also felt very American in its diversity. And I mm -hmm. still, think it does um and and also San Francisco is a place you know I've always heard about and wanted to be in and um I remember I so I did two summer intensives before I stayed for the year first summer intensive I fell in love with the city and the people and it was it was really it was really great and I and I came back to school better um which was also important and and then the second year I remember I turned down some other company offers because I knew I wanted to have the chance to audition to be a trainee because I had a few mm -hmm. friends that were in the trainee program and it was like exactly what I knew I needed in order to have kind of like a proper finishing school. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, and I, and I mean, I just got really lucky that they accepted me because I really was, I like, your eggs in that basket you yeah, were like like here we go I know I like I know I belong in this city and I want to dance in this company so uh yeah I took that risk which is kind of not like me but I just knew I just knew I don't I don't I can't explain it. I just knew that's what I had to do and so I did it and um yeah and then I had one year as a trainee in the company which was super formative for me I think that's probably my most formative year of being a dancer. And then I also started choreographing and kind of got my foot in the door with the school choreographing there, which led to choreographing with the company here, which led to choreographing, you know, Around everywhere, which is great. Um, and yeah, so I, I feel just really kind of grateful that worked out. <laughs> well, it, okay, so you like touched on a couple of things that I want to circle back on because one is that you really started your career as a dancer and as a choreographer mm -hmm. very simultaneously which I think can be rare and I'm sure has um, its advantages and its challenges at the same time so I'd love to hear yeah. about that but before that um, you also said as a dancer that training year was really formative mm -hmm. for you maybe the most formative of your career what yeah. about that was it the faculty was it being key like what what about it feels so formative for you honestly everything <laughs> I I our trainee director was Johnny Vascare at the time and Wendy Van Dyke um, was also really I'm not sure I, I, I think she was the coordinator but she was also really hands-on with us um, and we had all of the teachers in the school such as Jorge Esquivel, Paris Maynard, um, it it was Jeff Lyons. It was really like we had all of the resources. I, I remember at that time, the trainee program was more like a second company in the way that I didn't dance so much with the company. I did maybe Nutcracker and that was it and Diamonds, but I didn't perform it. Um, but we had our own rep and we did probably in the winter and spring, we did two shows, at least two shows a week around the Bay Area which is insane. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't think the school does, yeah, as much. I mean, they still do quite a bit. Um, and we all got a chance to learn every part that we've performed, even if, or that, that was in our like trainee rep, even if we didn't perform it. So we were really going into like Chai Pa and then to like Forsyth and then into working with the choreographer and then into, you know, yada, yada, yada. So on top of all of this and on top of, I think also Jeanne like really changed the way I thought about ballet and movement in in the way it got me back into like sensation based movement and less like looking at a position and just trying to put myself there without using the proper muscles, which was like so important for me. Um, and 
and I would I would do my whole trainee day and then go do like intermediate men's class at the end of the day often just to like get as much information as I can so on top of that we also did like I mentioned a choreography workshop we would do improv workshops we did teaching workshops we learned how to do kind of like stage makeup we had a tour of the opera house and got to talk to like the lighting the resident lighting designer and like see the electric board we got to you know go upstairs and see the company it, we really i think the focus of the program was to not only in, like train us as dancers but introduce us to all of these facets of the art form that also uh, we could transition into because I think they were really just interested in showing us the possibilities of what this world can offer. Um, and that was really formative for me. Uh, and I feel like I took a lot from that as now I am kind of do like I have my hands in a lot of different parts of the art form. So um, yeah, it was awesome. Really hard, a lot of, very, a lot of hard work. <laughs> Sounds like it was a lot of work. Yeah. Like <laughs> but, such a yeah. kind of well-rounded program for yeah. you, too, yeah. right? Okay. You learned so much, you got to see yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. And I also, I also just think I like I've done, I think I've done like six years where I've worked with the trainees since, right. and so I just feel really integrated into that program, and I love. Like I love going back down in the school and just like choreographing with them or doing improv exercises or whatever. And, and it's just a really special time in a dancer's career. So I, I learn a lot from them still, like it's still giving back to me and that's kind of the crazy part. <laughs> yeah, that you've had such a longstanding relationship yeah, with yeah. that program. Yeah, so really coming back around, you started choreographing at the same time that you were a trainee. Um, talk about that. Talk about kind of coming up both uh, into the company sort of simultaneously as a dancer and a choreographer and what those two sides of your career have kind of fed to each other. Yeah, I think, um, so basically the choreographic portion of the train year was optional, um, but it was at the same time, like one of the pieces would be chosen to go to a festival we were going to next year. So I felt that there was pressure, but I really wanted to do something that was kind of honest and interesting to me and not to make work to please other people. And I mean, that is the constant struggle of being an artist, right? Um, yeah. And so that was kind of my like, guiding North Star at the moment. And I kind of think still is, like that's the one thing I've kept kept with me. Maybe not the one thing, but one of the things I've kept with me. Um, luckily my piece was chosen that year and I kind of, I got to make a few pieces within the school before I started working with the company. And it was it would just be like, oh yeah, that piece was good. Can you make another one? And I'd just say, yeah. And that just kind of kept happening. Um, I remember feeling, which I think this was the best thing for me, feeling like I had all of this studio time and all of these dancers and really like nobody in there to shape what I was doing, <laughs> which at first scared, I was terrified of that. I was like, I, they're just putting me in the studio with these dancers and hoping something happens. And like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think that really like that, that's, that was super helpful for me because it really felt like an instapot of, of forming my values and identities as a choreographer, not, not just with like the end product, but with my process, which I still find ultimately the most important thing is like to fully take care of this art form and not just put something pretty on stage just because I understand that's, for me, that's what it's going to take, or that's what it has taken to give this art from longevity. Because um, if nobody wants to be in there dancing, nobody's gonna keep dancing, basically. <laughs> uh, and there's so much, you know, good stuff about that. 
right? There's a kind of integrity to yeah. an integrity, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well. yeah. I totally agree with that. Uh, and, and I think, you know, so the great part is I'm able to still choreograph as, as I am working as a dancer with really the, the names in the business. And I, I think that's the amazing part about being dancing, dancing, being a dancer with this company is, you know, we have Forsyth, Ratmansky, Wielden, McGregor, like everybody in. And so I, I mean, you're, you're Yuri Posikov, who's our resident choreographer. Um, so we really have a lot of different voices and processes and um, ways of working surrounding us. And I get to kind of like pick and steal and see what works and what doesn't work. And so that's really been special for me as I've been kind of um, balancing the two. I do think I do think choosing to prioritize or to to stay choreographing as I am dancing does you, you know I think both are careers that take 100% of your being <laughs> so there are times where I'm away choreographing and I miss that like take me out of six ballets in a rep you know like there are moments where I'll I'll come back one day late and then I'm can't be in any of those ballets. And I think, you know, that's been, that's been the toughest part is just, just trying to figure out where your priorities need to be. And especially in, in my opinion, like my, I really need to flip my, how my brain works depending what hat I have on, right? Cause if I'm dancing, I'm more, I'm kind of focused on my body and, um, my environment in a physical way and conditioning myself and making sure I kind of like have this this one focus and when you're choreographing you you really I like it, it I have to be in a more cerebral place I have to be uh managing energies in a room I'm constantly constantly mulling over the structure of the piece and the mood and what I want to say and checking back in with your gut and like Especially, and then there's like, just even just like, okay, connecting with your lighting designer, your costume designer, your set designer, checking with the dancers, making sure the director's happy, blah, 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 like all of these things. And like, which right. it just comes with the job. So, so that's, that's one thing that's tough, that's tough, honestly. And, and that was one thing that, you know, this pandemic has led me <laughs> to see that I put a lot of my pl on my plate and I rarely have any free time. And once we had that shelter in place, I was like, oh, I can finally like listen to myself again and kind of be settled within who I am. Like maybe I need to start taking some steps to incorporate some <laughs> decompression time in my life, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, you know, that's just, that's part of it. And and it's it's a really special thing that I already have, you know, 11 years experience under my belt as a choreographer um, while I'm still dancing because and you're so young still. Yeah, you just, know? I think, yeah, I, I think I have a better sense of, like I can go, like once I'm ready to to really take the reins on that, I, I'll i have a good understanding of who I am and what I want to do and say and already have a, a little established rep and reputation and things like that. So I feel I feel really grateful for all of that. So I do want to circle back around to you as a dancer, but while we're talking about you as a choreographer, this is a pre-recorded interview and we can release it whenever we want. Great. So I know, and soon the world will know that you are supposed to have a new ballet on the season next yeah. year. Yeah. Have you seen that at all? Or is Sorry. that just like way too far? Have you started well, thinking about I, it at all? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting my... Uh, ducks in a row for that, but I still haven't made the concrete, concrete decisions about music and designers, so or dancers. So <laughs> I'll keep you posted as I'm going. I have, yeah, I have some uh, options I'm really excited about uh, that I've been wanting to do for a while. So I ho hopefully, yeah, hopefully it'll work out. Yeah. I mean, as long as we can be back in a theater. <laughs> 
right? Or else we're going to figure out how to do it. Uh, I know that's, I think that'll be an exciting opportunity if we need to be there. So hopefully, I really hope we will be back in the opera house. Me too. I miss, I miss it. It's like home. I know. I know. And there's like a certain lovely intimacy about getting to do like these kinds of conversations, like actually one on one and not in front of an audience. And yet yeah. I kind of miss, it. I yeah. thought I would admit, yeah. I would miss the people like sitting and watching this conversation. Yeah, totally. So, you know, we'll see. Um, but I do want to circle back on you as a dancer and kind of, as you said, reflecting back on the um, 11 years that mm -hmm. you've been. What are some of the kind of standout moments for you from a dance perspective? Like highlights, moments um, you remember age, I think, Yeah, I think one of my one of my first big roles was Benjamin in Cinderella. because uh, mm -hmm. I got to dance that the first year it was created and like really be in the studio as it was being shaped. And I think at that point Taras Dimitro was um, the original cast here in San Francisco. Uh, and that's also something that I've continued to dance for what, the mm -hmm. eight years? I think we've done it like six times in the last eight years. It's kind of like our bread and butter, right? Um, and I, what I like about that is Chris Wield and the choreographer really allowed us to play with it and especially like, the Prince is a little bit more, I think like the principal couple, the Prince and Cinderella are a little bit more serious and Ben, Benjamin and Clem, his love interest really get to be the comedic relief, but also have a lot of dancing. Um, and, and that's just fun. Cause I, you know, I, I love dancing and but I also love theater <laughs> and I love to like make people laugh and I love physical comedy. So that's something that uh, we were, we were kind of each allowed to shape on our own. And, um, and that was a really special thing and still is. We just danced it this season. I think we did it in our fir first program and I got to dance with Ellen Rose, which was great. Um, so that was really, continues to be really a big, big one for me. Um, I think Lensky was my first like super, super featured role, which I kind of fell into because another dancer got injured and, um, uh, they ended up casting me for it. And I, I think that one was a good lesson for me of trying to find the right balance of kind of like focus and dedication without making yourself go crazy. Because <laughs> I got, I was fortunate enough to do it two years. Um, and the first year I ended up injuring both of my thumbs, which is like a really weird injury for a dancer. I don't know what that is about. Um, but but ultimately, I think I was I was really feeling the pressure and and kind of like just beating myself up over it and and kind of lost the joy a little bit um, and it and it was still really fun to dance. But I, I I was really happy to revisit that role because I I think I was able to approach it in a more balanced way and find more joy and and I was dancing with Sasha DeSolo who's like my best friend um which we had to kiss on stage and we were like I was like anybody else it's fine but like we were like wait what because we're like siblings I don't know it's like that that kind of moment <laughs> but uh um but but I I think yeah I, I was happy I got to revisit that because it, it's a really special role for me I I like I can relate to him like that was one of the kind of the first formative of featured roles of mine. And then, um, and then from there, I don't know, things that I really enjoyed, Ibsen's House. Um, I got to dance the Ghost Pot of with Jennifer Stahl. That, that was really a special thing just because Jen and I never get to dance together because we're, you know, she's a tall woman and I'm a middle-sized guy. <laughs> uh, but I love that role. Um, what else? Uh, within the golden hour, I, I kind of, I think I've done like every role in that ballet, or I did like the core and the soulless guys and the first part of the, um, but I got to dance that with a few um, people and be coached by Katita, who was the, who originated the role. So that like that, that's really special. Um, 
yeah, plenty of really fun stuff. So I, I know I said we were going to talk about you as a dancer, but so many of what you, of the parts you just highlighted are um, acting roles as well as yeah. where they're in a story ballet, which I don't think is something you've kind of, I mean, your work often has sort of, there is meaning in it, right? There's a, there's a certain kind of a narrative arc in a lot of your choreography, but I believe I am correct in saying that you have not taken on like mm. a full story ballet yeah. yet. Choreographer. Is that something you would like? Uh, no. To... No. <laughs> no. You're not going to do that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, yes. I also, I just want to make sure I have like the right tools and confidence to do it because I know that it's all lost if not every element works, <laughs> if that makes sense, in a, in a story ballet. Because if it's crafty and if, and if, if crafty and beautif beautiful and musical and all of this stuff, but if there's one element that's off, it like fully crumbles. And that just scares me. And I know I should not be defined by fear or let it, you know, like guide my decisions. But I also, it's something that when I tackle that, I want to feel, I want to feel like prepared for it. And I want to feel um, like it's just the right space and time. So yes, I mean, I, I also think something that's so special about this art form for me is it completely circumnavigates language. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been thinking a lot about how I approach these kind of like abstract narratives that I usually incorporate in my ballet ballets, which for me is like purpose and intention. Um, and, and I find what works best for me actually is, is if I'm, even when I'm creating it, I like, I just go with my gut instincts for the first like three quarters in, in what, in kind of what my response, my emotional response is to the music, as well as all of those other, other things. Um, and then I, I start to like, then I start to clarify and articulate my emotional arc and how it all kind of like entwines with each other and what it is talking about and get in, and I, then I get more like intellectually specific, but I've learned that if I start with the intellectual side, sometimes it really blocks like the organic nature of an arc because I'm trying to like force something to be something it might not yet be, or it might not end up being, right? And then, and you know, so I, I, I think that's, that's like a, that's another tough balance for me. Like I'm the same way that like dancing and chore choreographing for me is two sides of my brain. Same with, same with like, you know, ar the artistic and the intellectual, it, it, but finding that happy medium, I think is, is really important. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yes, I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in it. <laughs> the fact that you were saying earlier about process in the studio and the need for there to be that kind of integrity and care in the mm -hmm. process. When, you're, when you have the story you're ready to tell or when you have the team together that you feel yeah. like you can have the same kind of integrity to it that you would have with a shorter ballet or a non-narrative work, okay. you're ready, totally. right? So I do want to be respectful of time. I, you know, these things are supposed to be 30 minutes and I, I went for an hour with Matt yesterday too. <laughs> we have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> um, speaking of roles in uh, story ballets, you got the opportunity to do Lysander, right? Yes, the, yes, yes, yes. Dream. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Part I feel like we've gotten to hear a lot about what it's like to dance Oberon this year at Tanya, but we haven't heard so much about the lovers. So what that part is like, but also what it was like to film uh, that stream, just, yeah. you know, right after our season kind of. Yeah. Well, first of all, I have to say working with Sandy Jennings is such a treat. Um, and I just feel like we really connected and she, and she just has such a great sense of what the ballet should be and how we can like mold ourselves into it in a way that still feels kind of 
integral with who we are. Um, so, so again, what I love about the lovers is they are care. They're kind of caricatures of humanity. So as as kind of clearly defined as they are, and as kind of sometimes funny as they are, they still have a lot of truth about them. And I think that that's really special to play. Um, and again, Lysander is like kind of made, I, I, I just, I kind of can relate to him sometimes. He's, he's a like, like definitely a romantic and an optimist, maybe to a fault where he can't really see past his own nose. Um, which is fine, you know, <laughs> and then and then it all gets messed up with the with the with like the love flower fairy dust. Um, but you know, I love dancing with Lizzie Powell. She's like we were such a good team together, and I think we we kind of like vibrate on the same energy level. If that makes sense. Uh, so you know, it was really fun. It was really fun just doing. I mean, and then and then I have to say, dancing with Sarah Van Patten and Luke Ingham were both such good actors um, was a real treat for me because you just get lost in it. And, and, and that was really special, especially during the filming when there's like that little bit of added pressure. And um, so that was really fun. I, I loved, yeah. People were going to get to see all of it, right? Yeah, which is such a special way to view ballet because it's kind of rare and especially for those parts, a lot of it is acting as well. Um, and of course, all of us were like, how should we, do we tone it down? Do we, what do we do with this? You know, cause like, I think that we, what we had like eight or 12 camera, cameras in the theater, um, which was, <laughs> for me, that's a little more nerve wracking than a live audience because you know, I like to think they can like feel your energy and they don't see everything and yada yada. But I had to realize that, you know, the like Sandy and Helgi and um, the company's gonna make us look good. So, you know, I, I you have to trust them. They know what they're doing. So, but it, I have to say it was really, it was equally as strange as it was kind of magical to do that last show because this was already just like right before the shelter in place orders happened. Um, we, I think we could all sense it was like the last thing we would do in a long time. And it, it, it was really like dancers, orchestra, stage crew, hair and makeup, kind of everybody coming together, like Bravo, the kids, everybody to come coming together to do, to, to do this thing. And, and we we had the pressure of a live performance with no audience or applause, which I also, I always feel like an audience is one of your like fellow dancers in the way that they contribute their energy and whatever energy they bring affects the show. Um, and it was really strange to not have that, <laughs> but still be like, nervous. I was like, what is, what is this feeling? Um, but it was still, I don't know, it was just a special thing that we could all share together and kind of create for the people who will be missing us. And and I know, you know, the ballet is a big part of a lot of people's lives. And I think, you know, sharing art is more important than ever right now. Um, so it was, it was just a really special moment and I'm happy I got to dance a role that I really enjoyed with people that I love and respect. Great. So that was kind of the end of our season, unfortunately. That's what oh. that was. <laughs> I think you guys maybe got one company class in yeah. after that. That was kind of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you've all been figuring it out since then. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that anyone really saw promotions coming in the midst of all this <laughs> in some ways then you know normally we announce the the company in june you know mm -hmm. everything's just mm -hmm. so can you tell us uh how you found out that you were promoted to soloist what yeah. is that? i had a missed call from helgi and um so i called him back uh and i was like i don't know in bed in my room <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he hit the FaceTime button and I was like, oh <laughs> hi. Yes. Never 
times with Helgi before. Was no, that? I haven't. That was that was great. It was great. I mean, it was great to see him. It was, it was, and and that's he. You know, he said the same thing. He was like, I just miss being able to come up and watch class and you know be at work, which I I I get. I agree with. Um, and of course, you know, the thing is, we we talked about next season's new work for a while and yada yada yada, um, and kind of how we would get back to work and because that's going to be a whole process um and then kind of like 20 minutes later he threw in that he was going to promote me <laughs> and I think I just laughed <laughs> I was like what um yeah and it was really it was it was kind of it was special it was great and immediately I thought of Diego and Ellen even though I didn't know they were promoted because he wasn't going to announce it until a few days later um and then we had a big company zoom meeting and he told everybody, but what he said first, he, he said, you know, I think this is just the right time for some good news. And then he listed off the promotions. And I thought that was just really both like kind and smart of him. I think, I, you know, I think it's great for company morale. And um, again, I was not, that was the last place my mind was <laughs> at all. So it was a big surprise, very unexpected, especially amidst all of the craziness of what's happening right now. So, yeah. Well, so, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> I, I said it off the record and I'll say it on. I think so many of the, everyone who was promoted this year, you know, trained in the school, come up through the company. It's so nice for all of us. It's a nice morale booster for the entire organization yeah. to yeah. work rewarded so oh, thank you <laughs> um i have one last question and then we'll wrap up but we're in this weird time um what are some of the things you're doing to kind of stay sane amongst all of it or what are what it, what would you recommend maybe to a young student who's out there and listening to this and trying to figure out their yeah. lives. I know, I mean, I think a lot of us feel that we don't even know like what, how the art form will change after this, how theaters will be affected and for how long. And I think it, it that's scary. I, that's undoubtedly scary. Um, but what gives me hope is seeing how much the community really cares about dance. Like I've been able, like the classes I've been able to take over like Instagram live or zoom or whatever. I've, I've been like learning some like European voguing. I've been doing like contemporary master classes. Like the resources that this is opening up is, is really special and um, I think even just the amount of ballets that are online right now, just the information, I like, I honestly think this is like cracking the egg of the industry in a lot of ways that, um, of course, every, we have been, you know, protecting artists' integrity and copyright issues and everything like that, and which is important, and I understand everything behind that, but what I'm hoping is that this will change the art form in the way that we see that online content will never replace live theater and perhaps can further cultivate our theater audiences in, in the way <laughs> that I went to go see Beyonce a few years ago live in concert because I know who Beyonce is because I listened to her on Spotify I've seen her music videos. I follow her on Instagram. And, and you still I, to pay. And I still will pay however much I paid, which I don't even want to mention. I don't even remember. To, to see, and still one of my favorite concerts to this day because it was immaculate, right? Um, and, and you can't replace that with online content, like, or video footage or, Yada yada yada. So I think that's that. I think that I'm hoping that that we're gonna understand 
differently where dance can live. And also to see just like the amount of creative things that people are doing with the art form at home is, is special. And how, you know, we're all being pushed to kind of figure out, okay, so like, okay, so we can't do this over here now, let's try over here. And kind of like the magic that creates as well, I think is super special. So um, again, like I think art lives in the law of abundance. Like I think there's no limitations to what we can manage and sometimes tough moments end up shaping us in ways that are even more beautiful and creative. So that's just kind of how I'm choosing to approach our situation as an artist. And um, also that's like keeping me busy. Like I try and just be creative every day, <laughs> whether it's dance or makeup or, you know, crafting or cooking or whatever that is. And that's, that's been keeping me sane, so. That's great. And for all of our audiences out there, I'd wanted to find time to talk about some of your other projects and we are at time. So I, we're not going to go great. there, but yeah. everyone on your Instagram yeah. where lots of your other projects live. You're what? At Miles Thatcher? At Miles Something Thatcher. Great. Miles with a Y. Yeah. Easy. That's so easy. <laughs> all of Miles is makeup projects and you've been doing happy hours. You've been crafting, as you said, you've yeah. done all kinds stuff yeah so follow along and see what he's been up to during our quarantine situation here all right with that thank you so much for making the time and it was a real pleasure to chat with you yeah and great to see you i miss you oh, i miss you too <laughs>